we've been talking about knowing Jesus, but mm-hmm. you also mentioned earlier this term being in Christ. Yeah. And that's seeming to be a significant term used in conjunction with the idea of salvation. Yeah. What does being in Christ mean and how do we kind of think about it and start to dive down that idea? I, okay, so now we're stepping into the uh, quote unquote, the religious terms. Mm. You know what I mean? And um, here's, here's the worst part about religious terms is even the people who use them barely know what they mean. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> really, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, nine out of 10 Christians probably couldn't tell you what it means to be in Christ. They just know that they are for sure. They are, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, yeah. um, so imaginatively let's, let's do this. Um, I would say to be in Christ means use it two different ways. I'll, I'll use it two different ways. I'll use it one to say that I'm associated with him. Um, actually that's, that's what the word Christian means. Um, there were different guys. Uh, so Herod, King Herod was a really bad guy. Um, but the power that he could provide people in society in, in around Jesus time pulled in a whole bunch of different groups Mm. who really had nothing to do with each other. Romans, rich Greeks, um, rich Jews who would not have been friends for any other reason but to come around Herod and share in the power that he could distribute to them. And so they became known as Herodians, that whole collective group of people who surrounded themselves to him, became known as Herodians because the only thing that bound them together was an association with this guy Herod. And in the in the exact same way, it's like I think it's the the same construction in the Greek is the word Christian. You got these people, Jews and Gentiles and and rich people and poor people and men and women who have no business being friends together. And why why are they all associated with each other? Because they're all associated with one guy, and they're Christian. Hmm. So to be Christian, to be in Christ, means primarily that I am associated with Him. That is the the defining thing about my identity. I just thought of something really interesting. It's a cultural expectation in America to, or at least has been for the majority of of the establishment of America, is that we all get along. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a virtue to get along, but it's fascinating before Christianity kind of, the worldview of Christianity spread, how it was expected that you wouldn't get along. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, racism is normal. Yeah. Across across world history and world cultures, racism is totally the norm. People do not get along. And and it was a Judeo-Christian base in this country that had us get along <laughs> because so many people were associated with Christ. And that common bond let people move past other things. And we have not always lived up to that. But anyway, this is yeah. not political. But... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, so, uh, you may have heard another religious term, like to have your identity in Christ. Mm. Um, but that to have the main thing about you be that I am associated with Jesus. Um, and then the other thing that I would say to be in Christ, another way to think about it would be, uh, to use Jesus' own words to say that I abide in him, that, uh, where he lays his head is where I lay my head and, I'm staying with him at all times. So I had a friend tell me this once, that um, in the old days, uh, when Jesus was a rabbi, um, to be the student of that rabbi, you would literally just follow them around. There was no classroom. There was no formal, you know, university credits education. Yeah. You just had the rabbi who did what he did and went where he went and taught where he taught. And if you were going to be his student, you literally just followed him around and yeah. did everything that he did and listened to every single word he spoke, and tried to memorize all his sermons, tried to memorize all his jokes, you know, you became a mini version of your rabbi. That's, that was your training, was to be exactly like your rabbi in every possible way you could. And he told me that in those days, it was expected that if your rabbi went to the bathroom, you would follow your rabbi into the bathroom. Hmm. And I kind of, you know, made a face, and he goes, um, (coughs) excuse me, He goes, if your rabbi said a prayer when he went to the bathroom, wouldn't you want to know? 
Yeah. You want to know everything your rabbi does. You want to be exactly like him in every way. If there's something that he does, you have to know. And he said he had told that to somebody else, and that guy laughed in his face. And he goes, but if you are going to be a student of Jesus, that's the kind of student of Jesus that you have to be. That you would follow him everywhere. That everything he does, you want to be exactly like him. Mm. That you just straight up copy him like a son to a father, that everything that he is like, you are trying to soak in and learn so that as best you can be, you are a little tiny copy of Jesus walking around and mimicking him. So this is this is the WWJD bracelet. Do you know what I mean? But on yeah, steroids, yeah. this is like another level that most people never conceive of. But I think that that is, when Jesus says, abide with me, abide in me, that is the idea, is that every moment you are attached at the hip to Jesus. And whatever Jesus would do in that situation, that is exactly what you are doing, to be his student, to be his disciple, to go and make disciples of all nations. That's what Jesus wants his followers to do, yeah. is to turn everybody in the world into a follower, student of disciple, of follower and student of Jesus, attached at his hip and learning every single thing that he does. And unless you are like that, that, I think, is what it means to be in Christ. Mm. If you are um, learning good religious principles once a week on a Sunday morning, I don't think that's in Christ. You are not his student. You know what I mean? You're you're in for a pep talk once a week. That's not to be in his student. So I have this uh, verse from 1 John 2, and just tell me how you think this fits into the definition you're talking about yeah, go ahead. of Christ. But it says, whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him but whoever keeps his word in him truly the love of god is perfected by this we know that we are in him by this we know we are in him um if we keep his word so i guess like two questions to come out is like what commandments are we talking about here and um what is his word but whoever keeps his word yeah is in him i think that is exactly what i'm talking about okay um, so let's maybe I'll use a different analogy instead of saying, keep his commandments, like a finger wagging, you know what I mean? I'll just say like, when you're really close friends with somebody or when you know two people, you can tell that they are close friends because they act like each other and they laugh at the same jokes and they share the same inside jokes. And you're like, I've heard that before. I've heard yeah. that joke before. I've heard that phrase before. I've heard that sound bite before I know that you and you are friends because of how much you have rubbed off on each other and or but on the flip side let's say oh I know so and so but you, you don't act like them you don't know the first thing about them you yeah. don't know what they like you don't you know of them yeah you know of them but if you don't keep what they're like in your heart you don't know them you don't know the first thing about them mm. and so to be, to know Jesus is to know what he's like and to take my life and conform it to his. I have to know what he wants, what he likes, how he acts, and, and begin to conform my life to him. And if I see you and your life is not conforming to what his life is like, you don't know the first thing about him. Yeah. Now, there's there has to be room in there for growth. For me to say, I do know the first thing about him, and that might be all I know, is just the first thing. But I'm growing, and I'm learning, and, I, and I'm walking with him. And, and there's got to be room in there for that. But um, if there's obviously stuff that God does not like or that he says is against his ways and against his message and what he's trying to tell the world and how he acts toward the world, um, if it's incongruous between that and your life— um, I don't think it's censorious or mean to just say you don't know him. Yeah. I mean, it's just a plain fact. You don't know him. That's, you know, and it's not like um, anybody's trying to beat you down or judge you. It's just a plain fact. You don't know him. And that's okay. You can get to know him. But, but so, you don't. There, so there is this pull and this tension between things you do and what you think, right? Like, so, you know, put your faith in Jesus, right? This, yeah. this idea, which is we're saved by the grace of, of, of God. Like there's no amount of things that we can do that will 
earn our way out of the brokenness that we've gotten ourselves into through making sinful choices. So, but then there's also the scriptures like without uh, faith without works is dead. So we're still kind of in this divide and there's so much depth here. That's why it's so hard to pick out each one of these threads. Hey, if you liked this clip, it actually comes from a longer podcast episode that Bailey and I recorded together. If you want to check it out, the link will be in the description below. Also, make sure to like and comment, subscribe, Please share this content so we can get it out to more people.